I want to circle back around to materials and talk about specifically V-Ray materials and what's new for V-Ray 5 because materials are handled a little bit differently in V-Ray 5 and there's a lot of cool new features that we should focus on a little bit. The first thing is of course presets or I guess library materials. So if you have your V-Ray toolbar which you can open by clicking on any toolbar and saying V-Ray toolbar. I have mine docked up here. You can have this little V-Ray asset browser here, which brings up your materials. Okay, I'm actually gonna go with one of these concrete ones here. If I add this to the scene, you go over here, or I can add to the object like that. Okay, so once this is in here, I want to kind of look at the structure of how it works so that it's understood. If I go into the slate editor, and if you don't know about slate editor, versus compact editor. Compact editor is what I've been using this. If I go into mode, it can go to slate editor and now everything is just different nodes and you string things together. Okay, so in here I can grab this material and it will now show up and we can see the structure of what it looks like, which is different than the compact editor. This would just be in a map slot and the compact editor here we can actually see it and how it connects. Okay, so this gives us a better view of what the structure of the material is. So this is from the library again, remember? So this is how they set them up. Instead of using bitmaps, as I've shown here and in other courses, they use something called a V-Ray bitmap, which is actually super handy because it has some additional features. Mostly it has this, the mapping source. Okay, so one awesome thing about this is that in the past you've had to map each bitmap separately. Now we can just create one mapping source for all your bitmaps and so you just have to change the mapping source and it will update all of them. And by mapping I mean the size of this image. Okay so one thing is that you can't view this like a regular bitmap because it's a .tx file and that's, I believe that's a proprietary thing from V-Ray, but if I hit view image, it doesn't work. Okay, so you can't edit these bitmaps. That's why they put them inside of a color correction map right here. So here we can adjust, we can apply color shifts to it and things like that, but we can't access it directly and like open it in Photoshop and edit it. Okay, but in this V-Ray bitmap, which is being plugged into the diffuse through a color correction map. You can see that there's a UVW randomizer map as the map source. That's this guy here. If you go in here, you have all sorts of different settings. You can see the size is set here. So the size of that scanned image that's being used in this V-Ray bitmap is six foot six by six foot six. You can change, you can set up randomization for the rotation and the scale. Okay, so let's look at what this means if we were to make our own material. We could do like normal. We'll say V-Ray, mater materials, V-Ray, and we'll just go to a standard V-Ray material. Okay, now if I wanted to drag this out and say general, and instead of bitmap, I'm going to go with a V-Ray bitmap, which is essentially just a bitmap with some additional settings. This is how they use HDRIs now too, because it can handle... It can handle high dynamic range images as well. Okay, so here we just need to find a image to put in here. Okay, I'm going to use this brick. We can view the image. Okay, we'll say that brick is like 10 feet by 10 feet, something like that. So what we could do is we could drag this out and put one of those UV, those V-Ray UVW randomizers on it. That's not exactly what we want here because we don't, well, this can randomize by element. So if we have different elements that we want different the brick to do different things on, we can use that. But it's not exactly what we want here. So we do, we are going to have a bump map for this. Okay, so for the bump map, let's drag out another one. Let's put another V-Ray bitmap. Now, the mapping source, you can see it has an output here. And we can just plug that right back into this, like that. So that the diffuse is driving the mapping for all of these. Right, so we just need to plug in another map here. We'll get the bump map, looks like this. We want the mapping for both to be exactly the same. So here we just have to go into this one 
and go down here and we'll say we'll use our regular real world scale and say 10 foot by 10 foot okay so now this one it's getting its mapping and it's if you're in the compact editor you can just plug it in right here but you can see that the mapping source is now this this bitmap here so down here this will look like that but this is going to be overridden by the mapping that is from here so now if i add a reflection map i can of course just keep doing the same thing make this go to here as well add my map okay and it's going to be mapped properly as well so all i have to do is change this one now what i could also do is say add a randomizer here v ray uvw randomizer i could set my real world in here right and then make everything go to that same spot like this so then i could have random effects on it i could also set my real world all in one place this is going to override any settings i have in here in the mapping okay so i actually love this because that way now I don't have to update my maps in every single one for if I want to change the size of it, I don't have to go into each map and change it. It's great. Great new feature. Okay, now let's just apply this and see what we get here. Apply it like this. There's our map. Applied and mapped properly with each map being ma mapped the correct way. Okay, let's look at a few more things with materials and V-Ray 5. Go back into the compact editor for you guys. Obviously, there's a different preview for V-Ray 5, which is nice. Shows the materials more accurately. There's also something here called, if I just go to a basic V-Ray material again. I mean, aside from our material library, we also have presets here. So we can just go to something like copper. Okay, and it gives you it gives you a starting point. So it gives you kind of the right color, the right amount of reflection, all those kind of things. One thing to look at is the coat color. So let's let's bring this up. This is a new setting for V-Ray 5. Not everyone will have this unless you have V-Ray 5. Okay, if I put a coat amount of 1 on this and then put It to a color of red it's like putting a new another layer of paint on top of the bricks below uh, kind of like car paint or something like that I, this is something I used to use V-Ray blend for or before that a shellac material where I use it a lot on wood where I make the wood underneath look a little more raw and natural and then I put like a stain and a sheen on top of it or like a lacquer on top of it something like that okay so you can actually get so for example, we can say coat glossiness is 0.4. Okay, so it kind of blurs everything. But underneath, we could say the glossiness is 0.8. Okay, so we're actually getting different effects, like the base layer is 0.8, and the top, the layer on top of it is more glossy hard to see here but you can get different effects and then you can lock the coat bump to the base bump so that now the coat is actually taking the bump from underneath too so there's a lot of different effects you can get with that I think I'm gonna change this to oh, that's cool I'm gonna change this to zero though I don't want a coat okay now sheen material you can see what this does. It's almost like doing the fall off type reflections. Okay, so as it gets to the edges, we're getting more red or whatever color we want, purple. Okay, so we're getting, sh it's like the Fresnel reflection as, if you don't know what Fresnel reflection is, it's that it becomes more reflective as it becomes more of an angle away from you. So looking at it straight on like glass, you can see through it. But if you look at it at a very, oblique angle then it becomes very reflective or like water okay so in this example when you use sheen it's kind of adding that color around the edges as the angle goes away from you okay so things like velvet or different fabrics or things like that can be very useful instead of using like a fall off map 
which is what I would have done in the past here. So glossiness, one, hard to see, 0.5, okay, very evident. Okay, so you can get a lot of new effects with these new V-Ray materials. I think it's all it's all stuff that I use all the time using different ways, like sheen. this sheen thing I would have done with a falloff before. This coat I would have done with a V-Ray blend material and made two separate materials blend together. It's just built in now. And then these presets are awesome because they give you a starting point. And like I've said before, I've made glass a million times, but now I can just I can just easily go to this preset and it does those basic things that I do over and over, it does it for me. Okay, so water, I've set that up a million times. I don't have to make a library or anything, I just say water and it gets me to a basic point. And then as you guys probably know, each scene is different, so you will probably want to adjust from there. Okay, so long story short, there's a lot of cool new things in V-Ray 5 that you'll have specifically in V-Ray 5 that are nice because they've added a lot of new things to the new materials in V-Ray 5. And I approve of all of them. So hopefully I've shown you how to do things the basic way. And now I'm giving you the new and improved version for V-Ray 5. So no matter what, version you have the concepts kind of remain the same the way you would do things might look a little different because they've thankfully made v-ray 5 better than the last versions and given us some slight improvements some workflow improvements some efficiency things and i think it's all great so if you got v-ray 5 check those things out <laughs>